I started working here in the 80s. And I was just saying to Nicky, looking over the times, I think I've done at least one play under every regime since Max. So I've, every, every artistic director, I've done at least one play with them, or for them, rather. So that's nice. So I, it's ongoing. I'm coming back in the winter. <coughs> Are you? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's my relationship with the court. Or I wouldn't be doing this, because I don't like doing interviews. But I couldn't resist doing it for the court, because if it helps, it helps. Um... I actually can't remember the first play that I saw here. It just feels like it's been a part of my life and my working life since I graduated from drama college. I started having work experience here, doing workshops on the international playwright seasons and the young writers seasons, and just kept hoping for years and years that I'd be allowed to work here on the stage one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I think in the last five years, I've done three very different plays here and uh, plays that haven't just been uh, different from each other but just completely unique kind of theatrical experiences and I just try and come here as much as possible. I did Far Away by Carol Churchill in 2000 and that was amazing, an amazing production to be part of when I look back on it. Um, we were talking earlier about short plays, well it only lasted three quarters of an hour and some people got very cross but it was three quarters of an hour of of powerful, emotional and intellectual meat. And it was just jaw-droppingly good. I've done lots of Carol's plays, but there's also some I haven't done, and for various reasons, um, haven't been free or whatever. And those are my only regrets when I haven't done them. I never regret doing one, of course. And the only good thing about not being in one of Carol's plays is you get to see it. <laughs> it's a great, amazing experience of light being in Far Away, but you never, I never saw it. And the play we did together, Love and Information, which was an extraordinary thing, and we never saw it. We could only You can only see snippets and tech and kind yeah. of get a sense of what you're in, and then the rest is feedback. The rest is people. feedback, yes. And because you, you, you're part of it, by then you, you know, you're... I'd love to see another production of it. One of the things I loved seeing of Carol's was a number. I came to the first preview, and that's something that I think is just great. To be at the first preview of a new play is the most exciting night. Because the people on stage don't know. They might know they love it, but they don't know what they've got. We had that, again, with Love and Information. They, until you put it in front of an audience, you can't know what's going to happen. So it's so exciting. And being in the audience for a number, oh, I loved, I just, yeah, every moment was alive. They were both brilliant, but also every moment was alive and exciting. I'm thinking it's so hard to choose in terms of like extraordinary experiences and experiences that you feel you'll never forget in some way. Love and Information was a, an incredible experience. Um, mm. A play that I did just recently, uh, God Bless the Child, uh, with you know a classroom of seven-year-old children <laughs> and it's not it wasn't in any way a sort of children's play it was a very adult you know very serious drama in a, in a lot of ways and we were being led by the children and so in in the performance of it we we had to adapt all the time to the sensibilities of working with the, with the children and and how it would affect them and and to manage their energy and to be inspired by their energy, it was extraordinary. But I think also, in terms of coming here and seeing something, Nadine Marshall in Random by Debbie Tucker Green, coming here and seeing one woman on stage just take us through the lives of a community and do it so bravely and, and you know, technically brilliantly and emotionally devastatingly, it was just something you know, you could hear a pin drop, like just completely stunned to see someone take over this whole space by themselves. I know other theatres now do do new writing, which, thank God, they all, you know, we, that's what we need. But for me, this has always been the heart where there's no doubt the play is the centre of why everyone's there. And they have had starry productions or whatever, and there's nothing wrong with that, but... There's always been, since I've known it, an ensemble feel and a, a, a team all working for the play. And 
That's the best way to work. For me, I love it, I love it. So you're all engaged in bringing something to life that is dynamic. Um, it matters to me as a performer because I feel very much that I'm allowed to explore new avenues here and allowed to break boundaries and any kind of limitations that I might have felt. I feel very much here that um, my point of view is, is, you know, valid and accepted and part of the creative process and I also feel very challenged when I'm here. I've done things where, you know, literally I I've never I've been terrified and never done them before, but the the ethos being, you know, come, try, fail, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Um and also I think when I come and see plays here, I feel that it's constantly the envelope's constantly being pushed in terms of structure, in terms of what theatre actually means, in terms of what it means to society. I feel that you're never allowed to just sit comfortably in an idea of what theatre should be, that it's constantly moving forward. So it matters hugely, I think. I love, I, I don't know if it's part of this question, but I, I love, part of working here is I love doing readings for people because that's like, it's not the start of the process, but it's, a, it's somewhere along the way for the playwright, uh, particularly with the young playwrights, um, to, to give them a reading, which then might go on to a production. So you feel terribly responsible because it might mean that it's produced. I did... I did the reading of Stoning Mary by Debbie Tucker Green, and um, it was so exciting to do that. And it did go on to a production. And um, well, I've done quite a lot, and it's very... It's, it's part of the important... Or, like, for the international department, it's part of the whole work. It's not just productions that happen. I still feel, in some ways, that I have quite a new relationship with the Royal Court... Um, so I'm kind of constantly, like, I, so for instance, I had the opportunity to work under the last artistic director and the new artistic director, and I was so impressed with how much I felt the theatre was allowed to transform under that mm. artistic director, and how much, uh, y you know, that there is a sense of um, ha handing the baton over. Um, so... I suppose it's just the freedom to be able to continue to do that and to never feel that even as successful as it has been, that it, it can't be experimental. And to the to the point where we question all the time, I, even from how we experience being in a theatre, whether it be just spending time in it or writing in it or you know meeting your friends in it, to me, it's become a really important part of just that community of theatre going people and artists so just yeah continued freedom in that respect oh that's a great way of putting it continued freedom yes I that's what I want just carry on please just carry <laughs> on doing it um and keep on changing and keep on making it providing the plays the centre providing new playwrights are always encouraged then it will keep alive I, I just thought of another for, preview I saw that was so glorious when I came and saw Road for the first time Jim Cartwright's Road mm, and, wow. and they'd you know they turned it into like a nightclub and you, oh, every time you come in it can be different I mean some some things are less obviously different and some more but um, some are more internally experimental but they're always new I have lots mm. <laughs> of vivid memories I suppose my most vivid memory is it's a very personal one, which is, uh, which is part of the love and information. I remember actually s talking to Linda about it <laughs> when I had to do something I'd never done before, which is go in front of an audience and sing and sing sort of quite classically and operatically. And uh, this is coming from somebody who just only sung in the shower by itself before. So even though it was a tiny thing, it was an experience that I was literally jumping off a cliff every night and it was only a tiny part of what the experience of the play was. So it was having this one moment where you had to push yourself in terms of your fears so much and then not being allowed to indulge in it and having to go back and be a part of an ensemble and kind of the discipline of that, you know, not indulging in yourself but thinking about the importance of the group and the whole and the whole experience was, um, yeah, something I've carried with me, I think. 
mm. in terms of getting over getting over yourself and getting <laughs> over your fears. <laughs> Carol's writing so distilled that, in a way, even speaking her words is like jumping every time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it's either going to come out right or it's going to come out wrong. And, yes. and there's no time to... You can't sort of mess around in the middle. It's, it's there or it's not. So that's a, that's a great thing that she gives you, that then you can carry into other bits of work and know that it, you have to hit, hit it. And, I mean, it's not one... It's not, not just about one moment, but it's kind of... That's also a really unique experience in this theatre, is that as much as you're going through your acting process, uh, as you said, it's very much a, a theatre about the play. Mm. And so when you're performing it, you are informed very much by the audience's response to the writing. And it, you sort of become this channel, in a way, where you're learning all the time what the play is about, still. Mm and how the play works in a very kind of immediate way, mm. which I find quite unique to this theatre. Mm. One of my memories, um, I was thinking about this as I came up, one of my memories is um, when we did the, this, the end scene of Our Country's Good, which, which in its, the, doing Our Country's Good and the recruiting officer as the same company was a lovely experience, as you can imagine. The last scene is where they're just about to go on stage and so they're, they, they're getting ready to go on, and they're a bunch of um, convicts who've been sent to Australia. And at the time, as always, the arts were under attack. I mean, they're always under attack, aren't they? And being deemed non-essential, and should we put money into this? And so it was a really... The, the play said the arts are essential. I mean, literally essential to human beings. Art is essential, you know. We sing songs, we dance dances, we make pictures on the caves. That's what we do, we tell stories. That's our, that's, as an animal, that's what we do. And that's how we make good societies, by having these debates in public, in these stories. And um, that, that play stood up for us. <laughs> and so many... Other act. I mean, normally you don't play for actors, you play for the public, but that play, because people felt very um, undermined at that time, it was great that, that they would come up to me and say, oh, you've really reminded me why I do it and what's important and that we, that we must do this. So that was a great memory, to be pretending at the end of the play, to be pretending to just be about to go on. It's lovely, <laughs> with Beethoven playing. <laughs> <laughs> If the Royal Court didn't exist, I wouldn't be happy until we'd reinvented it. I would be concerned that there wasn't a place, a community, where uh, the issues that I care about in terms of being heard, in terms of us being a community and us being able to share, really share all our stories and experiences and not being afraid to kind of be completely honest about what it is those stories are uh, wouldn't be wouldn't exist wouldn't be here um, so I feel very safe in the knowledge that it is here <laughs>